first year in Conference USA, and their first time hosting a BCS school. They are ready to take the field. We are here at the Alamo Dome, where number 13, Oklahoma State, comes in to take on these UTSA Roadrunners. And hello to everybody, Justin Kutcher alongside the captain of the 1996 National Championship team from the Florida Gators, James Bates. James, this Oklahoma State team came into the season ranked number 13, but there is a quarterback controversy. Who would be the starting quarterback? After one week of play, no more controversy. It's J.W. Walsh. Absolutely. You've got the, the MVP of the bowl game in Clint Shelf, and you've got the Big 12 Freshman of the Year. A tough decision to make, you'd think. But J.W. Walsh took over on the third series against Mississippi State last week, brought in a spark, and it wasn't a tough decision. Mike Gundy took the podium after the game. He is our starter. And how about this? 125 yards rushing. First time a quarterback has gone over 100 for Oklahoma State since 2007. And oh, yeah, by the way, everybody's talking about about that poke defense right now. When's the last time you heard him talking about the Cowboys on D? Never. You always hear the offense. As far as defense is concerned, UTSA. People may say, who are they? Well, they do know one person, their head coach, Larry Coker. Yeah, and how about him running out through the smoke into the Alamo Dome? Just like Larry Coker used to bring him out in the Orange Bowl, a national championship team. He coached two-time national coach of the year, 73-25. and 25. He knows how to win football games, and he is very happy. You almost get the sense in talking to him that coaching six first-round draft picks his first year at Miami and catching these guys the first year just start-up football. He's having as much fun here as he ever did down in Miami. Well, we are here in the Lone Star State, and if you look at the rosters of both teams, there are 161 total players from the state of Texas. They will have that Texas flair here today in San Antonio. Number 13, Oklahoma State against UTSA. It's coming up next. Fox College Football is presented by GEICO here at the Alamo Dome where Oklahoma State comes to town to take on the UTSA Roadrunners. This Roadrunners team is a new football program for how to build a program. Let's check in with Brady Papinga. Imagine having to practice week in and week out without a single game for a whole year. For me, it's tough enough to practice a whole week without playing a game during a bye week. But the University of Texas at San Antonio football program 2010 had essentially a bye season to where they practiced week in and week out with one single game. So you can imagine today playing in this atmosphere and against their first nationally ranked opponent is quite the reward for the Roadrunner football program. Justin? And Larry Coker has his team ready. What he has done already has been spectacular. And he is quite familiar with the head coach for Oklahoma State, Mike Gundy. Mike Gundy was the quarterback under Larry Coker at Oklahoma State. A great moment before the game as those two shared an embrace. UTSA won the toss. They had elected to receive. Kip Smith will kick off. Cam Jones and Aaron Grubb are back deep. Get in there ready here. Jones will take it from the two. And Cam Jones gets tackled at the 20 yard line, 18 yard return. James Bates, how about the impact players for this one? Well, one of those impact players for the birds right there, Cam Jones. He's electric and can hang with anybody out there on the field. Junior center Nate Leonard will be huge. He has to take care of guys like Calvin Barnett, the big senior defensive tackle, newcomer of the year in the Big 12 last year. And, hey, Justin Gilbert's back. What do you say? Five interceptions as a sophomore. Kind of quiet last year. Zero picks. He had one in week one against Mississippi State. State. Watch out for him on the corner. Eric Sows in the shotgun to start off for David Glasgow, the second behind him. On first down, rolling out as Glasgow completes his first pass to Cole Hubble. And Hubble gets pulled down after a completion of four yards by Caleb Levy. Eric Sosa out of Beeville, the son of a high school football coach. 
three quarterbacks on this roster, every one of them has a dad that coaches high school football. And a guy, if you watched him against New Mexico last week, those Lobos sure know he will scrap and fight and find a way. 99 yards he took him on the last series to win it in Albuquerque. Second down and six. It's kept up the middle. Glasgow, good fake, four yards. And now third down and two is coming up. These are the situations you want to get yourself in all day. Third and two is a defensive coordinator's nightmare to call. A lot of things you can do with this offense. And one thing that impresses me is UTSA has picked right up where they left off the momentum coming out of that game one win. Nate Shaw in at fullback here on third down and two with Glasgow the second in the backfield. Option. It's Evans Okacha, and Okacha gets tackled shy of the first down marker. Great job defensively to fight out of the block. How about Sosa going down, cool and calm to get this ball off the turf? Now 36, Okacha, turn it up and go get it right there. You need two. He tries to get it outside and get 15. He had a first down, Justin, if he just goes north and south. So instead of three and out, act the tackle by Daytuan Lowe. And that'll bring on the punter, Christian Stern. Here for UTSA, Josh Stewart, an explosive player, is back deep at the 30 for Oklahoma State. And a whistle before the snap. Offense, number 38. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. A delay of game penalty here against UTSA. And there was some confusion. They got their punt team out there pretty late with about 20 seconds on the play clock. And now you back them up even further. And because of that, Josh Stewart will move up five yards now to the 35-yard line. A good high punt, fair catch signaled and made at the 32-yard line. A 43-yard punt. Let's check out the impact players on this side of the ball. Well, one of them just had the ball in his hands. Unfortunately for UTSA, it was a fair catch. Josh Stewart is electric, a little bit smaller, and very tough to run down. And speaking of tough running, the guy from Tulsa Union right there, Jeremy Smith, the senior running back, Nick Johnston, the junior strong safety in this 4-2-5 defense will be very active and all over. And watch out for the legend of the fall, Tristan Wade, the little big man playing safety. J.W. Walsh, the starting quarterback of the shotgun with Jeremy Smith splitting out wide now. On first down, the first pass of the game is complete to his favorite target. And the ball comes loose. And they're saying it is down. They're saying Josh Stewart was down before the ball came loose. Nick Johnson had recovered it. But second down is coming up. Look at the Cowboys standing over the football. Jake Jenkins barking out to his offensive lineman, ready to snap. And they won't get it off. Boy, the Alamo Dome is going to get loud if this replay. Shows something the hometown fans are hoping for. Dan Romeo is the referee for today's game. We were told how loud this place can get. They're expecting about 45,000 here today. Don't forget, this is an early kick time. So here's our look, Justin. The... You can't see it from that angle. There are the elbow and the hip. It's a ball that is just ripped away. It's, it's never truly fumbled out away from the body. So the fact that it, that it never has any air in between it, Nick Johnson, the junior from Beaumont, one reason why we're keying on him today because he's just so aggressive and just, just a football playing machine, knows how to make things happen. As he shows you on the first play against Josh Stewart, the leading returning receiver in the Big 12. Let's watch now, Justin. What, 
Right now, you've got 22 going after the football. Well, the and ball is coming ball. loose at that point. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. So there you have it. The ruling on the field is confirmed. Player was down. So second down is coming up here for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Nick Johnson last year forced four fumbles. He is aggressive. Second down and four. It's kept by the quarterback Walsh who will get the first down and get out of bounds. Six yard run for J.W. Walsh and that's why he is so dangerous and quickly this Oklahoma State team gets in the hurry up. Trying to get in a rhythm they couldn't find last week. That pass was nearly picked off, completed to Jawan Seals. A three yard completion, Darren Starling there for the tackle. Dangerous pass though by Walsh. Nick Johnson almost took it away. Second and seven. Delayed handoff. Smith trying to bounce to the outside. It has a block. Smith, stiff arm, gets forced out of bounds. And a flag comes in, a late hit by Tristan Wade. A 10-yard run, and it looks like it'll be a 25-yard gain. Defense, number seven. 15-yard penalty, first down. Uh, Tristan Wade, we know you're excited to get out there and make plays in front of this big crowd, and you're an outstanding first-team all-conference safety last year, but do it, do it in bounds. Careful with that hat being lowered, too. That's the rest are watching. Hand off to Smith again. And Smith gets stood up at the line by a shot Mabry. Going back to that last play, you can't let a guy like Jeremy Smith get outside of those guys. They were in position and just got flat-footed. Jeremy Smith, over 100 yards as well, rushing last week. Getting outside and on top of it, you give him the penalty, you're going to have him in a third down and seven. Instead, they're down knocking at the door now. Jeremy Smith goes out. Desmond Rowland comes in at tailback. Walsh. Pass on the slant. Complete again to Seals. Darren Starling on the tackle. 10 yard completion. First down. Nice big red shirt freshman, 6 foot 2. Nice target for the sophomore. On first and 10. The handoff up the middle of Rowland. And Roland gets up to the 10 yard line, four yard run. Cody Rogers with the stop. Second down and six. This is the kind of opening series that Cowboy fans were expecting to see. A little bit more rhythm last week. It's exactly what they wanted here today. Walsh with some time to the end zone. Touchdown. Jawan Seals. Ten-yard touchdown pass to Seals, his first touchdown. A good opening drive by J.W. Walsh found Seals three times, including for the touchdown. And now Ben Grogan on for the extra point. Seven-nothing Oklahoma State. A 15-yard penalty helped out, but this offense was moving the ball down the field. And after a play fake, Seals in the end zone, 7-0 Cowboys. He took a hit, though, on that return by Cam Jones. It was a nasty lick. Watch here, the left of your screen, and he just almost... You wonder if it's the head hitting the turf as he goes down. It's good to see him pop up. And that right there shows you just how violent this, these kick cover teams can be while they're trying to make it safer by doing away with the big wedge. Okacha and Glasgow in the backfield here on first down. Sosa comes near side to Jones. Jones spinning move, 
but can't break free of the tackle. Kevin Peterson got the jersey and did not let go. A five-yard completion could have been a lot bigger if it wasn't for the strength of Peterson. Well, the, the finger strength of Kevin Peterson. Watch him. You talk about hanging on for dear life. We're about to find out what a real roadrunner looks like. <laughs> Cam Jones, you saw him on the kickoff there, Justin, and right here, this guy can go. Brandon Armstrong in the backfield now for the Roadrunners. He splits out in motion. On the snap, the pass is complete to Brandon Freeman. Close to that first down marker, Justin Gilbert with the stop. And third and short coming up. Third and short last time, they had it. You just got to make up your mind to go get it. Move the chains right here. Let that defense catch its breath and make some adjustments. Nate Shaw in at fullback. Running the option, the pitch. They got the first down, David Glasgow. A three yard run on third and one. First two series against Mississippi State, Oklahoma State was really bad on defense. With the exception of the nice play outside on a couple of plays, UTSA has had its way here running this football on Mike Gundy's D, a defense that spotted Mississippi State three points and then shut him out the rest of the game. When you block, when you get guys down on the ground, you can't make plays on the ground. You've got another block up top from Marcellus Mack. And An 18 Mike. yard run for Bias, but a player injured is Shamil Gary. The strong safety as he's now at least sitting up. He was the one who got blocked initially, that you pointed out. And that is a legal block. It's. You know, it's something that Gary should be used to. He played a lot of football for the Wyoming Cowboys, and they see the Air Force Falcons all the time. They're used to those guys going after their cleats. First and 10 here for UTSA at the 41-yard line of Oklahoma State. Okacha in the backfield. Direct snap to Cam Jones. And Jones gets upended, picks up two yards. Tyler Patman with the tackle. Going on the Wildcat formation here with the Roadrunners. Some different looks and different looks, different shifts and movements, both offensively and defensively, something that, that gave the Oklahoma State football team trouble early on before they settled down and took control in Houston against an SEC team last weekend. Shaw back in at fullback. Okach the tailback. Second down and eight. Movement up front. Flags come flying. Free play. Shot deep down the field. Incomplete. Looking for Kenny Bias. Kevin Peterson there on the coverage. And another player's down for Oklahoma State. Daytuan Lowe is down as he and Kevin Peterson collided. Well, we just saw Shamil Gary limp off the field. Watch the hit here on Sosa. Sean Lewis, good job staying away from the helmet. Very close to being late, but not a bad hit. And then high and low on the intended target down the field. It's a wonder that Kenny Bias popped up so easily. We are seeing movement on the field from Daytuan Lowe's. So that's always a good thing. We've seen seen some very physical play. A lot of a lot of trips out there already by the training staff and 
Here comes Mike Gundy. You know, as, as you watch Mike Gundy walk across this field, it's it's tough. He's got four guys on this football team that played at Denton Geyer High School, just north of Dallas. J.W. Walsh, his dad is the head coach there. Josh Stewart is another Geyer guy. Went to look up earlier this week, phone number, see if we give Coach Walsh a call, and immediately see the news that it was starting fullback, opening of dove season in an accident, was shot and killed last week. So I can't even imagine how tough it is for the parents for that community. So, so Denton, Texas, we're thinking of you. This very tough times. Daytuan Lowe, you can see him collide. It looked like. And it just snapped back, but he's walking off the field. So we've seen three guys go down. And the good thing is all three guys have walked off the field on their own power. But it was an offsides call against Oklahoma State. That was the free play. It's now second down and three here for UTSA. Len Spencer, new defensive coordinator, has already had to put a couple safeties in there for Shamil Gary, Daytuan Lowe, a couple starters. Gonna have to get it done. Glasgow the second back in the backfield next to Sosa. Jones in motion, they hand off to him, now the reverse. Grubb gets the first down as he gets dragged down from behind at the 26, picks up eight. Tyler Johnson able to bring him down. Nice call. Nice call by the road runners here. You think if there's one guy in this building that can hurt us, he's wearing number one, Cam Jones. You've got some new bodies in there, new safeties. Gosh, I gotta get out there and go make a play. Everybody over pursuing and you get a big first down here inside the 30. First and 10 with Armstrong now in the backfield. Sosa sets up the screen for Armstrong and overthrows him. The pressure coming by Tyler Johnson off the end. And oh, he wants it back. He had a couple blockers out there. You see him pat his chest and look at his guys. Cam Johnson was ready to rock. And here you're just going to see the pressure. Pressure, it's a screen pass. So, so everybody, and a good job of recognizing there by the interior to retreat. And there's nobody way around Brandon Armstrong. And that's a throw that Sosa usually can make. Second down and ten. Again, over the state checks out. The pass is complete to Jones up to the 15 yard line. Zach Craig with a tackle. At the 15 yard line. Offside. Defense. Number 98. All these decline. It's all the plays. First down. We were talking with the coaching staff of UTSA, and they said this place will get loud. So far, with a hard count, we've had two offsides against Oklahoma State. We're helping them out. Cam Jones helping the Roadrunners out as well, out there in space. He's tough for anybody to bring down. Lasco splits out long. The handoff to Okacha. He cuts it back. Nice cutback. And Okacha gets up to the 12, picks up three. Craig there with a the tackle. Second down and seven. This team is incredibly efficient in the red zone. When they get in, they score. And it's an efficient football team across the board. Well coached, don't make a lot of penalties and turnovers. They want to punch it in here, though, to answer. Tenth play of the drive. So pass incomplete, intended for Kenny Harrison. He was open. Sosa just overthrew him. Then you could see Sosa's upset at himself because that's a couple of passes on this drive that he's had his man open. Absolutely, and he's better than that. Spread it around to 11 different receivers last week. There's nobody in Sosa's face here, and there's nobody around the receiver. And doesn't he know it as he looks to the ceiling of the Alamo Dome? 
Third and seven coming up here for the Roadrunners. 4.35 on this drive. Taking time off the clock, shorten the game. Armstrong in the backfield. Play clock down to two. Sosa gets it off. The quick pass is complete. Towards the end zone, down at the one is Brandon Freeman. These fans know how to make some noise. First and goal from the one. And there's Bergen up front. False start here against UTSA. Five-yard penalty. First down. So now it'll be first and goal backed up to the six. Goes without saying, you're down there knocking. You've got the Alamo Dome rocking behind you, ready to just pop the lid off this place. And you kill the momentum like that, but you got to find it right back right now. You've got four downs to punch it in. Play clock is down to four. Sosa with some time throws the end zone incomplete. Was looking for Brandon Freeman. Kevin Peterson there on the coverage. That was a broken play. You saw Sosa go to fake the handoff, and his running back, Glasgow, wasn't there. Well, Kevin Peterson had probably a touchdown-saving tackle earlier with his finger, just a sophomore from Wagoner, Oklahoma, the 100-meter champion, and there he was just, you can leave him on an island. You're seeing that early on. He's a, he's a special corner down at the bottom of your screen right now. Second and goal. Tobias, Bias to the end zone, touchdown! Iano on for the extra point. We are all tied up at seven. Just the third year of the program. They're taking on number 13, Oklahoma State, and UTSA answers with a touchdown of their own. The Roadrunners have tied it up at seven thanks to a 13-play, 71-yard, scoring drive that took five minutes and 37 seconds we just talked about the quarterback play of kevin peterson here he gets run out of the room by cam jones great blocking great job by glasgow and how about that thanks to kenny bias in a 71 yard drive the road runners come right back down and answer against the first bcs team to ever come into the alley San Antonio. You talk about a group of people that love their football. Boy, they're making some noise during the break there, Justin. Sean Ayano will kick off now with Justin Gilbert back deep. A high short kick taken at the three. Gilbert. Still on his feet past the 20, up the 22. Let's go back to the studio in Los Angeles. Patrick O'Neill for this Lowe's Never Stop Improving Game Break. All right, guys, thanks a lot. A shift in the mo in the Florida-Miami game. After the Gators block a Hurricanes punt two plays later, Jeff Driscoll, the keeper, a two-point conversion attempt failed. We have a 7-6 ball game at Sunlight Stadium. Justin and James, back to you. All right, thanks, Patrick. And, of course, my partner here, James Bates, is really keeping tabs on that one. <laughs> Had a good talk with Coach Cooper about the Gators and the Canes yesterday. 
First and ten here for Oklahoma State. On first down, it's the handoff to the wide receiver, Tracy Moore. And Moore gets up to the 24, picks up seven. Nick Johnson with the tackle. Quickly, the Cowboys back into the hurry up. Walsh throws far side, completes the pass to Charlie Moore. A first down. Well, you got a nice big rest from your offense. Here, Roadrunner defense. It's time to go back to back to back. Walsh is running it right down the throats again. Walsh over the middle, completes to Stewart. Up to midfield, another first down. 13-yard completion. J.W. Walsh having no problems whatsoever moving the ball here against the Roadrunners defense. And he's thrown a couple pretty passes into traffic. That's got to be exciting for folks back in Stillwater. Stewart in motion. And they hand off to Jeremy Smith. And Smith bounces off a couple of tacklers, keeps on moving the pile, gets seven, second down and three. He gets seven. He averages 6.2, and only one in front of him career-wise that averages any more. You may have heard of him, Barry Sanders, at 6.8. And now you've got a second down and short. A whole lot you can do with situations like this. Kept by Walsh, play action, taking the shot down the sideline. Complete to Tracy Moore. Another first down, and Moore is down at the 21. A 22-yard completion. Walsh started 5 of 10 last week. Missed a wheel route, so it's good to see him hit one down the sideline. Quick pass to the far side. That is complete to Charlie Moore. And Charlie Moore gets wrestled to the ground by Crosby Adams. Second down and nine coming up. We saw Oregon last week. They move fast. This team's moving really fast right now. I don't know I ever saw Oregon close to this speed last week. Smith in motion again. Play action. Walsh to the end zone. Touchdown. Brandon Shepard. Just the bigger body's gonna win. Crosby Adams, a great job to play before on an open field tackle. He's there in his hip pocket, but look at the, the size difference. 6'1", 200 pounder in Shepard, and Crosby Adams the third, 5'9", 175. And it's a nice throw to understand that by Walsh, and good job at the body position by Shepard. Brogan's extra point is good. How about J.W. Walsh? You think he's happy being the starter? He started off this game 9 for 9, 96 yards, two touchdowns. This one, a 19-yard touchdown pass to Brandon Shepard. It's 14-7, Oklahoma State back on top. Later today, college football on Fox Sports 1 continues as Louisiana takes on K-State. While over on Fox, it's West Virginia against number 16, Oklahoma. Then Washington State looks to upset 25th-ranked USC in a Pac-12 showdown. Our full day of college football continues later today on Fox and Fox Sports 1. Back here at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, UTSA trails 14-7. As we start the second quarter, James Bates, Brady Papinga, and Justin Kutcher here. And I tell you what, this crowd is into it. First and 10, Sosa joined by Glasgow in the backfield. Sosa, pressure, and Sosa goes down. Sacks at the 16 by Jimmy Bean. Part of that Denter, Denton Geyer group on this Oklahoma State roster. Two defensive ends, a, a little bit lighter than some of them you'll see across the country, but boy, can they get off and get around the edge. That's one thing, watching that New Mexico game last week, they had trouble on the edge. It was up the middle where they would three-step drop them all day, but now you've got Cal uh, Calvin Barnett to do. There was some movement. It'll be a false start here against UTSA, so back it up five more. False start. Offense, number 84, five-yard penalty, second out. 
Brandon Freeman called for the false start, so now you're looking at a second down and 20. Don't forget this drive began at the four-yard line. A big completion to Cam Jones gave him some room, but now you back it up. A total of 10 yards after the sack and the false start. Second and 20s, third and 15s. It's not a good recipe for this offense against this D. Sosa, quarterback draw. He took a hit. Picking up only a few yards by James Castleman. Time for a game break. Let's check back in with Patrick O'Neill. Back to the big rivalry game, Florida-Miami. Check out Stephen Morris. Play action down the middle, 52 yards. Philip Dorsett set wide open. Touchdown, 14-6. to Miami Hurricanes just picked off Jeff Driscoll as well. I'm sorry, James Bates. We're not trying to rub it in, but what a game we got going on there in Miami. Back to you guys. Patrick, what are you talking about? Of course we're trying to rub it in. Patrick, I, I didn't hear any of that. You were breaking up on me. <laughs> Third and 18. <laughs> Offsides, free play, and it's thrown behind Cam Jones. I think it might have been Tyler Johnson, the other end, getting off too early. Offside, defense, number 40. Five-yard penalty, third down. You know what, Justin? You can only control what you can control. You know, Pat, I'm not going to let Patrick rain on my parade like it's raining down on the bottom in Miami, Florida. And not that I can control this one, but here I am. And I am so excited for this this San Antonio community. Spent some time here in my childhood, so I know how much they love football, this football team. And really, when Oklahoma State's been clicking, they've been a blast to watch, too. Third and 13, incomplete. Kenny Harrison, the intended receiver, but pressure was coming against Eric Sosa. So UTSA will be forced to punt after a big defensive stand when Oklahoma State had a short field. As you get your backs right off your goal line, get yourself some room after a stop by your defense. Christian Stern on to punt. Josh Stewart at his own 40. Stewart with some room to make a return. A flag comes flying in. Stewart breaks tackles. Stewart, he gets rest to the ground at the 41 of UTSA, but a lot of flags were thrown. Let's see what will be called. A 42-yard punt, an 18-yard return. During the return of the kick, illegal block in the back. Receiving team, number two, 10 yard penalty, first down, timeout. That'll negate that run back by Stewart. The ball will be placed at the 37 of Oklahoma State. Larry Coker, a national coach of the year, back at Miami, trying to lead his UTSA Roadrunners to an upset over Oklahoma State. They trail by seven. The Ducks are out by the Riverwalk here in San Antonio. A beautiful day outside here inside. The crowd is going crazy. Our stack comparison brought to you by KFC, the official sponsor of couch skating. KFC plus football equals couch skating. And a terrific start for J.W. Walsh, but both incomplete passes happened on that last drive. Here he takes over from his own 37-yard line. One of those incomplete passes, Justin, to David Glidden when they wanted back. I'd come right back to it here on this series, see if they corrected it. On first down, the handoff to Roland right up the middle and Roland across midfield up to the 48 of UTSA. A 15-yard run by Roland. Right back at it. Walsh quickly swings it outside, completes the pass to Jawan Seals. An eight-yard completion, second down and two. First start last week for Juwan Seals, a redshirt freshman from down in Port Arthur. On second and two, Walsh again to the sideline, completes the pass again to Juwan Seals, a five-yard completion, another first down. And again, these guys do not stop. I think it's hard to go get a big-body guy like Juwan Seals when you have the Des Bryant's Justin Blackman's come through here. A little play action again at Seals. That's three in a row to him. Steven Kerfess with a tackle, four yards, second down and six. 
And a, Seals will go to the sideline for a breather. Well deserved. It was all him on the opening drive. He got his first touchdown of his career. Walsh lost it to Stewart. Stewart breaks free and gets across the 20 up to the 19, 11 yard run. After the catch, some guys bumping. Kerfis there with the tackle again. Good job by Stewart to go up and get that ball, then wait on Big Jake Jenkins to come and get in front of him. Walsh to the far sideline, completes another pass, this time to Marcel Aitman, a nine-yard completion. A true freshman, Aitman from Dallas, Texas. 69 players on this Oklahoma State roster from Texas. Walsh to Stewart. Stewart takes it back, dives, touchdown! Ten-yard touchdown pass from J.W. Walsh to his best friend, Josh Stewart. When they score, it does not take long. I can barely get a word in before you got to go back to the play-by-play -play call. I can't imagine being a linebacker or safety trying to set this defense up. You got you to be able to process in a hurry. Extra point is good. How's this for a drive? Six for six in the air from Walsh, 48 yards, and a 10 yard touchdown pass to Stewart. 21 7, Oklahoma State. The sports show that's to Eastern, followed by Fox NFL Sunday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern on Fox. And James, with that Super Bowl act being revealed on Thursday night, Petros and I were trying to figure out who it might be. A suggestion thrown out there, Billy Joel in New York. Oh. Oh. Well, I, I'm surprised you didn't go with a, a country guy. There's, there's some New York City in you, but you, now you're a Charlotte guy. I love country, but Billy Joel, I, I got to be a little loyal to that. Yep. Kip Smith will kick off here for Oklahoma State. Cam Jones from the three. Jones gets tackled at the 25-yard line. Let's go back to the touchdown by Josh Stewart. One battle, one, just lining up. But watch these two defensive backs here. Here's what this tempo will do to you. Just too soft. Watch him here. Okay, boom. You make up your mind. You got to attack that block. You got to attack that block. And it's just, it's really just guys just kind of catching, catching the offensive guys trying to block them as they're trying to catch their breaths. But you better get used to it, UTSA. Only saw one tempo team last year. And they've got about eight of them on the schedule this year. Josh Stewart making a pay thanks to some big, strong blockers leading the way. On first down, play action. So it's a low throw. And that is an incomplete pass looking for Kenny Harrison. All right now, Mr. Souza, we've talked you up, and justifiably so. Heck of a quarterback, but that's three. You cannot have, hey, you make that catch and get three yards. Now it's second down and seven. Now it's second down six or five, and you make a manageable third down. But three missed passes, easy passes in this game so far. You got to take all you can get. Jarvie and Williams in the backfield running the option. Sosa pitches all to Williams. Williams down the sideline, and he is out of bounds. Let's see. Looks like the 32-yard line. A seven-yard run on the option for Jarvion Williams. Well, it's not quite, dare I say, Jamel Holloway. I know Cowboy fans don't want to hear about a sooner quarterback, but he finds a way to get it out there and couldn't quite stay in bounds. But there you go. There's a nice play. Now you've got yourself in a third and short. Third and three, and I feel this is almost a must right now for UTSA. Trailing by 14 with 10.45 to go. The option again. This time it's Okacha. Okacha breaks one tackle, trying to fall forward. With that fall, he got the first down. Huge run by Evans Okacha. And he got you. <laughs> Okacha got you. I like it. Well, a former walk-on, a transfer from Portland State. And I have no problem with Lampkin just coming flying up in here. Watch how he gets outside, turns him back in. But then the wheels continue to turn 
and lunging forward for what you said, Justin, a huge first down to move those chains. Quick pass out to the far side. It's completed to Josiah Monroe. And Monroe gets run out of bounds after picking up three. Now, if, if you saw Lampkin up at the top of your screen go and take on that block when he recognized the pass, that's what I was talking about on that touchdown by Oklahoma State. You'd like to see him keep that outside shoulder free because those speedsters, they get outside and they're going to make you pay. But that's a better job of attacking. Justin Gilbert, we've seen Kevin Peterson, Ashton Lampkin. Nice cover guys and physical cover guys on this team. Second and seven. Sosa rolling out now has the entire side of the field open. Down the field complete. Kenny Harrison. Thirty-four yards. Yeah. Sosa's not a burner by any stretch, but when you get him in situations where he can buy some time and use his legs he had all the time in the world all the space in the world could have tucked it and gone for a first down instead he tries to make things interesting and certainly makes it exciting for the alamo dome crowd on first and ten they fake the end around the shot towards the end zone and it's incomplete was looking for evans okancha ashton lampkin there on the coverage Good job by Lampkin. He's beat on the wheel route, doesn't peek, just puts his head down and flies. Here's another look at that big play. And a great job by the offensive line to flush everybody. And how about the throw here? Not terrible coverage, but dropping it in there to Kenny Harrison on the run for Sosa. Second and 10. Pass comes near side, complete. And run out of bounds at the 20 is Marcellus Mack. And it was a, a well-coached look last time for the cornerbacks. Ashton Lampkin. Van Malone, former defensive back at Texas, is the cornerback coach. This time, Tyler Patman. He's got to keep him outside. Remember, you've got 10 guys on the inside. Never want to get outside, uh, inside when you're the last guy on the edge. Here's a big third down again. Third and five. Sosa, pressure, gets rid of it. Batted up in the air by Jones, and then he couldn't hang on. Almost a fantastic play. And he had some running room. Well, there's, there's been some craziness in this first half. And this one almost pulled off. It, it, and you know, it's, it, it, it would have been the craziest double catch you'd ever seen, but it's this ball, he seriously was looking where he was running before he caught the ball the second time. Sean Iono on for a 37-yard field goal attempt. His first one of the year. And on sides, that's huge. Justin Gilbert. Wow. Offside. Defense. Unabated to the corner. Kicker. Fourth down. We are still short. And Spencer, what, what, what can you do but throw your hands up? Right down here. Just, just watch. I mean, it's, it's just a guy, Justin Gilbert, who has made a lot of plays over the years, just trying to make a play, but. You talk about hurting your football team. Oh my goodness, Justin, can't do that. Fourth and inches here. Nate Shaw in at fullback. Glasgow in the backfield. Glasgow on the keeper has the first down. That 
that's what's awesome about college football. That's not supposed to happen when you've got big 300 pounders. Team favored to win the Big 12 in there. Just big seniors at defensive tackle. And you got some guys on a football program that's a startup just trying to win a few. Just powering them off the ball on fourth and short. First and 10 from the 11. Sosa to the end zone and Kupling through the hands of Cole Hubble. Oh, he knows he should have had that one. Plenty of time, good protection up front by the offensive line. Oh, Hubble's a few opportunities here for UTSA. You have got to take advantage of every single thing they give you. Steal a few plays away, and when they're there and when they're easy, you got to make them happen. Sosa looks back. Running the option, the pitch to Okasha, and he got hit in the backfield by Kevin Peterson. Peterson not fooled at all, loss of six. Wow, Kevin Peterson, they said he took the reins after his freshman year, played a little bit. Guy Van Malone tried to recruit when he was at Tulsa, finally came back around. Now he's his coach that he went up to him and said, you can run, but you can't hide, Kevin Peterson. Now you're mine. And this is why everybody's so excited about the sophomore. We've seen him cover today, and we've seen how physical he can be up against the run. Nice drop there. Third and 16. Sosa to Okacha. Okacha over the middle. And he'll get wrapped up at the 14-yard line. Trace Clark with a tackle, pick up a three. So after all that, we're going to have a field goal attempt again here by Iono. And again, I go back to that missed opportunity by Cole Hubble. It'll be a 31-yard field goal attempt for Sean Ayano. Hit the game winner 51 yards last year to win it, South Alabama. Ayano's field goal is no good. A missed opportunity for the Roadrunners of San Antonio. J.W. Walsh, this Cowboys offense is clicking. He's 16 of 18 in the ballgame, 150 yards and three touchdowns. This year, Fox Supports is proud to partner with Stomp Out Bullying, the leading national anti-bullying organization for kids and teens in the U.S. Stomp Out Bullying focuses on preventing bullying and digital abuse. It educates against racism and hatred, deters violence in schools, and helps at-risk students. To learn how you can help, visit stompoutbullying.org. Oklahoma State back on the field. Brady, what do you see that this UTSA defense needs to do? They got to tackle better on the edges, and they have to stay alive versus the blocks by the wide receivers. On first down, the handoff is to Smith, who gets to the outside, and Smith with a stiff arm gets run out at the 26-yard line by Drew Douglas, a six-yard run. Hey, Brady, Smith is fun to watch. The, the, his bounce, his lateral movement is as good as anybody I've seen in a while, but they've done a good job of stretching it. Walsh, the pump fake down the sideline for Stewart. Stewart wide open, now cuts it back. And Stewart gets tackled inside the 20 by Tristan Wade. And that's what the play action pass will do. It'll get your safeties to bite. And that leaves, obviously, the deep part of your defense vulnerable. And that's what happened to UTSA right there. 56-yard completion to Josh Stewart. Walsh swings it out. Jeremy Smith, and that's a nice open field tackle by Michael Owuagu. That's what Brady called for right there. Just aggressive out in the open field, out on the edges, and bringing down a pretty tough guy in open space to bring up a second down and long. Second and eight with Desmond Rowland now in the backfield here for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Walsh. Over the middle, completes the pass for a first down to David Glidden. 
11 yard completion and again hurry up now first and goal from the four. It's kept by Walsh. Walsh gets wrapped up and hit by Tristan Wade. Oh, little big man. 5'11", 165. It's a fitting name too. Remember Brad Pitt, guys, in Legends of the Fall? Tristan Wade, his parents wanted him to be a legend of the fall, but a football legend of the fall. He found a way to come and, and play some big time football for Coach Coker. Love watching this guy. Every coach on the staff loves him. Timeout taken by UTSC. Catch their break. Second and goal coming up here for Oklahoma State. But J.W. Wall, she's got everything working. The pump fake finds Josh Stewart. A 56-yard completion. Second and goal coming up for the Cowboys. Not Second and goal from the four here for Oklahoma State. And the timeout by UTSA. Four-yard touchdown run for J.W. Walsh. Former walk-on, former quarterback in high school, Jeremy Seaton leading the way for Walsh. And it looked for a second there like UTSA was going to string it out. One thing I've been impressed with today is they've been able to to stretch these plays out to the sideline, but there they just got overpowered by the good blocks on the edge. Van Bergen's extra point is good. So a missed field goal by UTSA, a missed touchdown opportunity by UTSA, and now Oklahoma State turns that into seven points for themselves. It's been somewhat of a quarterback carousel here for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Last year, Wes Lunt was a starter. He went down. Clint Shelf started late in the year, was a starter last week. But now, J.W. Walsh named the starter for this week, and he is the starter. Speaking with the coaching staff of Oklahoma State, there's no well. If he doesn't play well, he's the starter, and he's proving that here today. Well, and Mike Gundy stepped to the podium right after the game immediately and said he's our starter. And, and Clint Shelf, the MVP of the bowl game, as we watch this replay, watch the blocks on the edge. There's 44 Seaton going down a great job by the receiver on the end, too, and just making it easy for a guy that can fly. He doesn't need that much space. And there they are. There's Clint Shelf, a senior Oh, he's got the better hair. Yeah. Hey, don't, but you know, with hair like that, you got to go to Alabama. Those are <laughs> those are Bama bangs, right? Those are borderline. That's a AJ McCarron dude. Cam Jones from the one. And Jones will bring it out to the 19-yard line. Tackled by Chris Catlin. All right, so 4:47 to go here in the half. 28 to seven, Oklahoma State leading UTSA. We said it before the last drive that they needed to do something. They did something. They moved the ball down the field, but they could not put points on the board. They have to do something here. Well, nothing to show for it, but a drop pass in the end zone and a missed 31-yard field goal. Justin, they go down and they, they make this lead, a, a two-touchdown lead at halftime and can hold on to end the half. That's a pretty, pretty nice victory to come out in the second half and have some energy. On first down, the handoff to Glasgow, and Glasgow will get two yards. Kevin Peterson with his third tackle of the day. So, now, sorry, Justin, if, if you're wearing an orange bonnet over there for Oklahoma State, just like you spotted, Mississippi State, three points on their opening drive and then really pitched a shutout against a, a an offense that can hurt you. You gave this team seven, and you continued to make some mistakes. You're lucky it's only seven. You'd like to see them put together some clean football here, back-to-back -back series. Sosa, pressure gets rid of it, throws, and completes the pass to Aaron Holmes. 15-yard completion on a pretty play on both ends. Just yesterday, offensive coordinator Kevin Brown, what did he say? He said, Gosh, he's six foot four, 190 pounds. We just want him to use his body. That's exactly what he did right there. 
Use the big frame to wall off the defender, and that's an easy pitch and catch from Sosa. Throw to the far side. Another complete pass, this time to Kenny Bias. A nine-yard completion. Let's go back to it. Here's Aaron Holmes. Down the middle of the field, and you see, and, and that's a good cornerback in Kevin Peterson, but he's also 5'11". You're not going to be able to do much damage there. He was all over him like a blanket. And that's why these big receivers, and don't they know it, at Oklahoma State are so valuable. A couple of names just roll off the tongue. Des Bryant, Justin Blackman. But on that last play, the pass to Bias, they gave him 10 yards for the first down. So first and 10 here for UTSA. Play action. The pass on the slant again complete. This time to Kenny Harrison. And another first down. 11 yards on this one. You know what I love about watching UTSA? They actually take their time on offense. They're not in a rush. We can actually talk. <laughs> it's kind of fun, isn't it? It's also fun. We were talking in the break. This, this Oklahoma State, the dizzying pace that we didn't see. We thought we'd get it at Oregon. We certainly got it this week from offense. Sosa again. This time it's picked off. Intercepted by Ryan Simmons. And Simmons gets shoved out by Cam Jones. A 28-yard return after all that by UTSA. The play before, I would have liked to have seen the senior safety, Daytuan Lowe, read the eyes of Eric Souza, the quarterback for UTSA, and break up on that ball and try to disrupt. Ryan Simmons, just a sophomore linebacker. You're going to see him come in here. There he is. Boom, right there. The linebacker doing a good job. You see him communicating, passing him off, watching the eyes, stepping up. How about the sophomore? And then he knows what to do <laughs> when he gets it in his hands. He's off to the races. J.W. Walsh back on the field. Delayed handoff. And Smith nowhere to go. A loss of one. That's the second interception for Sosa in this first half. And one of eight Cowboys Got a lot of Texans on this team, 69, but he's one of eight that are right here from the San Antonio area. So a happy homecoming for 52 so far. Second down and 11. Play action. Walsh has his man complete down the sideline to David Glidden. And Glidden gets tackled inside the five at the four for a 29-yard completion. Told you they'd come back to it. It was too easy earlier. Here, Nick Johnson's underneath, but still not close enough. Hand off. Smith. Smith up the middle. And he's going to get stuffed right near the goal line by Nick Johnson and Farrington Macon. So it's going to be second and goal from the one. Off the last interception, Oklahoma State could not take advantage. Trying to take advantage here. <laughs> Oklahoma State all of a sudden taking time off the clock with this first half winding down. Walsh to Smith again, and Smith will not get in the end zone. He crossed the plane. Now that is now 11 straight games with a rushing touchdown for Jeremy Smith. A good job by Blake Terry, another Denton Geyer guy. One for UTSA, though, and there you see the ball crossing the plane. A good job and a good football play by Terry because when you're down on this goal line, you got to hit him up high. You hit him down low, they're just going to easily reach it over the goal line. Waits for his buddies, but a little too late. It's hard to hang on to the senior from Tulsa Union, Jeremy Smith, for very long. Brogan's extra point is good. Six offensive possessions for Oklahoma State. Five touchdowns. 
The third rushing touchdown of the year for Jeremy Smith. Don't forget, coming up, the Pizza at Halftime Report with Rob Stone, Joel Klatt, and Coy Wire. They'll update you on all that's going on around the country, especially Florida and Miami. I know James will be paying attention to that, although he may not be wanting to pay attention. We're going to make him listen. <laughs> There, there, there are a lot of big games uh, to pay attention to today. South Carolina and Georgia anxious to see if the Bulldogs can bounce back. Do you think they can against South Carolina? I, I think they they can, obviously, because they have so much, so many weapons on offense, but I don't think they will because, really, uh, the rub last week against Clemson, they were soft defensively, and this is a football team in South Carolina that's going to try to pound them. 35 points here in the first half. This school is known for its offense recently. You look at what they've done since 2010, trailing only Oregon. However, they are the only school over the last three years to rank in the top 10 each of the last three years in total offense, scoring offense, and passing offense. Kip Smith to kick off again with Cam Jones back deep and 56 seconds to go here in the half. Jones will take it from one yard deep in the end zone. Cam Jones gets back out to the 20-yard line. 50 seconds to go here for UTSA. Well, as we saw from that last interception, UTSA, we were calling for a 14-point lead, and now you need to just kind of... <laughs> A 28-point lead, take it to the house. Don't turn it back over. J.W. Walsh knows how to butter up the big boys there. The offensive line. It was an offense that got the ball back in their hands thanks to that sophomore backer from right here in this area, Simmons. Sows on first down. Pass complete to Aaron Grubb for the first down. Up to the 35-yard line. UTSA has two timeouts remaining here in the half. Remember, it was a UTSA. The coin toss was won by the Roadrunners. They elected to receive. So it will be the Cowboys with the ball to start the second half. Movement up front, no flag. Looked like maybe Sean Lewis got away with a hold right there on Josiah Monroe. Little Lancey, big Calvin Barnett able to avoid the penalty. And now, as fast as this offense has gone, you got to be careful. Oklahoma State, all three timeouts left. You throw another incomplete pass, and you're in the danger zone by giving J.W. Walsh in that offense. Shoot, what do they need? They only need about five or six seconds, right? They could, you know, throw it eight times in that time. Second and ten. Sosa swings it out to Okacha. And Okacha down the sideline. Let's see where they mark him out. Ryan Simmons pushes him out. He'll be marked out at the 37-yard line, a three-yard pickup. Clock stops with 36 seconds to go. And third and seven coming up. Find a way to get this first down and keep it cranking. Try to go down there and at least get to three in TSA. Sosa, pressure. He's going to run with it. Sosa up the middle, got the first down. Up to the 48-yard line. A good scramble gets 10. Clock will stop as they move the chains. Look at the coach's son pop up and directing traffic. There's a sense of urgency. A lot of times you wonder where it is in a two-minute offense. They're ready. Sosa coming back, contacts, no flag. Justin Gilbert on the coverage, Marcellus Mack was the intended receiver. Naked eye, here's the replay. I think it was a, a good call, a couple guys just fighting with their hands. The way I see it in football today, you've taken so much away from these defensive backs. When they run with the guy, when they're in position, don't throw these little ticky-tack fouls for letting them just hand fight. You, there, there are so many things they can't do now. If two guys are just mixing it up a little bit, let them be football players. I think that's a good no flag. wonder how your brother feels about that, the quarterback, <laughs> you being the linebacker. 
And now a timeout will be taken here by UTSA. 30-second timeout. The UTSA Roadrunners. Look at what has happened, what has transpired. March 6th of 09, Larry Coker was introduced as the head coach. For all of 2010, there's no football. They open up on September 3rd of 2011. They beat Northeastern State, and look at that attendance. Unbelievable, right? Then, they end that year with a four and six record. Then last year, their only season in the WAC, they go three and three, eight and four overall. They started the season five and zero, oh, and now this year they join Conference USA. And next year, they become bowl eligible. And we talked about it. Good for Larry Coker. He he just he said, hey, I was away from football. I wanted to coach. Seemed like San Antonio would go, be a good place. It's been a great place, and it's been great for this football community to have a team they can rally around. 12 seconds to go. Sosa steps up. Has room, gets a block, and he gets hit as he goes out of bounds by Justin Gilbert. It is a first down, six seconds remaining in the half. Well, you, you get the sense that Sosa's better w when he's just out there kind of wheeling and dealing. We've seen him in a, a couple times early in this game, off on some throws. But remember, this is the guy the football team on the road at New Mexico down 13 to nothing early. He led the charge to bring them back and then had to take them 99 yards against the Lobos at the end of the game on the final drive to win it. That's where he's at his best, where he's just out there just kind of winging it and just being a ball player. Well, it's funny, Brady Papinga, you said you played with Brett Favre. You're watching tape on this guy. You think he's an old-fashioned gunslinger. Well, you look at the play last week that he had versus New Mexico, talking about Chris Sosa, the last play of the game. He scrambles it around, and literally, about as he's ready to cross the line of scrimmage, he flips it underhand, and apparently, the guy who the ball was intended for didn't even catch it. It was one of those backyard kind of street game kind of plays, and that's exactly like a Brett Favre type of play, like those swashbuckling pirates of today, which I think Chris Sosa is one of them. Just like you used to do in Wyoming, the one month of the year that you can play football outside. Right? Uh, <laughs> all right, well, correct. here's Sean Ayano on for a 59-yard field goal attempt. And now a timeout is taken by Oklahoma State. Fifty-nine yard field goal attempt. Eric Sosa, the quarterback for this UTSA team. He's trying to lead his team down. And, and guys, in this first half, looking at it, 35 to 7, Oklahoma State leading. But UTSA, I think, has actually played pretty well. They had that missed touchdown in the end zone, and then that interception just before that cost him. I mean, that's a 14-point swing right there. And guys, JW Walsh is playing some quarterback. We thought he was going to come in and run the wishbone option, or at least the inverted wishbone option, but heck, he's been whipping the ball around very well. I think he only has two completions and the incompletions in the whole first half. Impressive. 59-yard field goal attempt here by Sean Ayano. And Ayano's kick is going to come up short. And that will end this first half. 35 to 7, Oklahoma State. They've scored on all but one possession. It's time for the Pizza at Halftime Report. Let's go back to the studio. Rob Stone, Coy Wire, Joe Clapp. Take it away, guys. All right, gentlemen, Oklahoma State has extended the current longest active streak of scoring 20 or more points in the game. Now at. Fox College Football is presented by Geico. Back here at the Alamodome as we get set to start the third quarter. It is number 13, Oklahoma State leading 35-7 over UTSA. Justin Kutcher alongside James Bates. And James, I know this may sound weird, 
but it's 35 to 7. It doesn't feel 35 to 7. There's nothing weird about it. It's, it's this fan base. It's the fan base of both Oklahoma State and UTSA. There was no fan base three years ago, four years ago, and now out of scratch, they've got this because they're so passionate about their football. They're giving us the energy and their team. I'll tell you one team that's going to feel like it's a, it's a little bit closer than it is, Mike Gundy's team. Some mistakes that I'm sure he got on that defense and some just some errors throughout that they need to correct in the second half, too. Well, let's find out what Mike Gundy had to say. Let's go down to Brady Papinga. Well, I talked to Coach Mike Gundy, and the number one thing he said that his defense has to do is tackle better on the perimeters, and then we asked him about the tempo, and unbelievably enough, he said his tempo is not fast enough on the offensive side of the ball. He'd like to see that sped up more. With Coach Coker on the UTSA sideline, he would like to see his guys make those game-changing plays like we saw down in the end zone, the drop pass, and then he'd like to see his quarterback take care of the football a little bit better. James? I'll take it, but James could have taken it, right? <laughs> You were faster than me. You, you stretched there, Justin. <laughs> well, here is UTSA kicking off here to start this third quarter. Sean Ayano will kick off. And back deep is Justin Gilbert. And Gilbert comes up. A short kick takes that the seven. Gilbert spins. Still on his feet, getting close to the 30, gets across the 30. A good return, 24 yards on the return. Well, so far, so good for J.W. Walsh. Yes, indeed. The different than it was in week one. He came off the bench after sitting on it for the first two series and then ran up and down the football field, 125 yards on the ground against a Mississippi State SEC tough defense. And he's doing it on the ground, too, today. But mostly, the damage has been done through the air. Look at that. 20 of 22, 249 yards and three touchdowns for the sophomore. That's one thing that's very exciting for the Cowboys. On first down, the handoff to Desmond Rowland, who picks up two. And you looked at those numbers. Really, it should have been 21 of 22. There is a drop pass by, Jarrett, by David Glidden. That should have resulted in a big Another. first down. And off up the middle to Desmond Rowland. And Rowland gets three more, and a helmet comes off. Jake Jenkins, the center, he'll have to come out now. That helmet was looked like somebody was trying to do some bowling down there. It ended up about 20 yards from him. Big Jake getting a chance to show that pretty, pretty dome off. And now they're going to need him here on a third down. And remember, that's the center. Shotgun snap could be interesting. Third and five. Snap is good. Walsh comes near side. It's incomplete. Intended for Brandon Shepard. Defended by Darren Starling. Oh, Starling, if you're going to come underneath and go for that big play, you better make it. He whiffs, comes up empty. And oh my goodness, dodging a bullet here in the Alamo Dome because Brandon Shepard, if he hangs on to that, which he should have, He's gone. Just the second stop of the day for UTSA on defense. Kenny Harrison's back deep with Kip Smith punting. A high punt, fair catch called for and made at the 30. Our Chevy stat comparison so far through the first half. Look at that, 8.6 yards per play for Oklahoma State. Time of possession is won by UTSA, which is what they usually do, but those two turnovers one of them certainly proved to be costly. How about that 0 for 1 on third down conversions? You don't see that very often at halftime. 226 yards, five yards of play. And, and you know, that's what I'm saying. Mike Gundy was a defense that really won the game for him against Mississippi State, but, but has really been chewed up a little bit here against UTSA in the first half today. They need to respond. On first down, the handoff is to Glasgow. And nobody was fooled by Oklahoma State. Yeah. So missed opportunities in the first half, though. How's that for responding? No opportunity to do anything there. And, and here they are in their mistakes. There's two drops. There's one fumble by Hubble. Had his hands on it and had a big first down. Then a sure touchdown that he drops. And then this is unlike Souza. Souza missed a few throws. It went incomplete. And one into the hands. Ryan Simmons complete to the wrong color jersey. Second down and 12. Bias in motion. They fake it to everybody. Now Sosa throwing down the field incomplete was looking for number 86, Seth Grubb. 
Third and 12 upcoming here for UTSA. Early on in this game, UTSA didn't do this. They didn't get behind the sticks. They chewed away and found themselves in third and short opportunities. You see those sunspots down there? It's kind of like up there in Dallas. They say so God can watch the Cowboys. I guess he can also <laughs> watch the Roadrunners. Brady knows about that. He played for the Cowboys. Third and 12. Evans Okach in the backfield. Now he motions out. Oklahoma State coming with pressure. The pass over the middle looking for Cam Jones is incomplete. And a three and out forced by the Oklahoma State defense. I like to see that pressure come up the gut. Calvin Barnett, the newcomer of the year in the Big 12 on defense last year. Johnson and Bean have been active early. That's where you can hurt teams when you got more than one guy that can rush that passer. They can't just key on one edge. Christian Stern on to punt. I'm having a problem with my headset. Fair catch made at the 20. Nine yard line, a 44 yard punt by Christian Stern. We are at the home of the Alamo here in San Antonio, Texas, Oklahoma State leading UTSA 35 7. Thirty-five to seven, Oklahoma State leading UTSA just underway here in the third quarter. We've already had two offensive possessions, one for each team. And how about Oklahoma State so far here today? This is what they've done. I guess it's pretty easy. They don't score a touchdown, they punt. But in either way, it happens in a hurry. If you're on that defense, whether they're scoring or not, it seems you better be ready to rock as soon as you go over there while they're sitting down. Caleb Muncrief in the backfield now here for Oklahoma State. And the handoff is to Moncrief. Moncrief gets forced out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Picks up four. Jens Jeter with a stop. Second down and six here for the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. It's Moncrief again. Up the middle, up to the 37-yard line. Another four yard run for Muncrief. This is where you can get yourself in trouble. They're two and away, four yards, five yards. Have some success with it, and then you're very susceptible to a big play action pass. Ready Childs now in the backfield. It's kept by Walsh. Walsh trying to get to the marker. And Walsh is out of bounds with the first down. Again, run out by Cheater. Speaking of Jeter, not a good day right now for the Yankees trailing the Red Sox 5-2. <laughs> hey, you were talking about the, uh, when you do a lot of the baseball broadcasts every now and then, you need some time to kill, which, which happens. You talk about those all-star teams of the Yankees over the years against everybody else. We, uh, we need to get to some Larry Coker athletes here by the end of this broadcast. J.W. Walsh hit from behind. Cody Brooks. Good job by Brooks, the freshman. Look at freshman. Look at out of Seguin, Texas. Now you got a second down and long. Second and ten here for Oklahoma State. Little play action. Walsh taking the shot, completes the pass to Marcel Aitman. After all those runs, he completes the pass of 23 yards for the first down. And there is a player down for UTSA. That's Crosby Adams. Let's watch. Walsh here. What's been impressive is when you talk about processing, processing this offense, look how fast that next play 
is done. He's he's ready. He's signaling it. And the offensive line, the shape these guys are in, to, to be able to keep up with them. Here he'll get a breather thanks to the injury of Crosby Adams the third, who will hobble off. And, and Adams, just like we saw Darian Starling on the last series, come underneath. Guys, you're in great position. Don't swing and miss. you got to get a piece of that football. It's first down, you, you had him stopped. First and 10 now from the 39 of UTSA. Reverse. Excellent job defensively. Good job, guys. Brandon Shepard hitting the backfield, a loss of one. Jerron Harris, the senior defensive end, recognizes immediately and fights to keep that outside pad free knowing he has no help back there and let his buddies come make a play. Can you tell I'm working with a linebacker up here? Oh, All excited on that play? Surrounded, baby. Walsh quickly gets it outside to Marcel Aitman. And time now for a Lowe's never stopping proving game break. Let's go back to Patrick O'Neill. Well, Justin James, it's just too easy for eighth rank Louisville versus FCS Eastern Kentucky. Teddy Bridgewater, one of the best in the country. That's his third touchdown, has 322 yards. Shortlist for the Heisman, Justin and James. All right, thanks so much. Bridgewater off to a great start here in this young season. J.W. Walsh passing on third down, completes the pass once again to Aitman, and that's for a first down. 17-yard completion to the true freshman, Marcel Aitman, 6'4", 190, but there is a flag. Offense, number 71. 15-yard penalty, third down. All right, so take that first down away. Parker Graham, he gets called for the face mask. See if we can see it. He just... Gosh, he's got good hands inside position, but they just happen to go right at the grill of Cody Rogers. Parker Graham is a, is a senior. This is his 20th start, most experienced poke up front. And that hurts. How about that matchup? Parker Graham, 6'7", 315 against Cody Rogers, 6 feet, 250. So now it's third and 23. UTSA needs to stop. Keep him in front of him. Walsh, long pass. Complete for the first down to Blake Jackson. And you have to ask the question, how does he get that open that far down the field? 32-yard completion. Killer for a defense that had a little breath of life. <laughs> Over one, the Cowboys on third down in the first half. They're picking up all their third downs here. Walsh over the middle again. Again, it's Jackson, and this time it's a touchdown. First, it's 32 yards to him. This time, it's 22 yards. And what do we say? If they don't punt, they score a touchdown. And they do it fast and so fast that as a defense, there's no coaching in between. There's no huddle. There's no looking to your coach. There's no figuring something out. And wisely... Yursich, the offensive coordinator, hey, it's there. How are they going to stop it? They don't. The extra point is good for Ben Brogan. J.W. Walsh, four touchdowns in the air. He's thrown three incompletions on the day. It's 42-7, Oklahoma State. The River Walk here in San Antonio, my first time here in this great city, and I was so excited to actually see that last night. <laughs> I'd heard so much about it, finally I got to see it. I used to live here mid-80s, and it has changed so much since then. There used to be a small section that was nice, now it goes on for miles and miles. Beautiful downtown area, very a, a, a town that's very proud. The people are very proud of their city. It's, it's great to come here, and they love their football, as we found out this afternoon. And just for the record, I had the best Mexican food of my life last night for dinner. Mitierra. Yep. Phenomenal. Second and goal. Wildcat. It's Jones. Jones can't get free, and he gets wrapped up by Caleb Levy. Cam Jones was looking to throw the lefty, but he couldn't get rid of it. Big Caleb's been hiding on us a little bit today. The Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week last week. 
11 tackles, two tackles for loss, a half sack, makes up his mind. He's going to go get the speedster right here, turns it on, and then that's his best Superman ripping open his jersey. <laughs> 11 tackles last week for Caleb Levy. Third and goal now. Back to the 10-yard line. Sosa, they fake the play action over the middle, touchdown! Cole Hubble. He had one go through his hands earlier, this time he secured it. Absolutely a great job on the play fake to hold those backers, to hold Levy just long enough to let him clear behind. And a good looking play, and they're still on their feet here in the Alamo Dome for the Roadrunners. Sean Ayano. The extra point is good. On third and goal at the seven yard loss. A touchdown pass to Cole Hubble. It's 42-14, Oklahoma State. Forty-two fourteen. The band is making some noise here for UTSA as they trail on this one. But going back to that touchdown play, what do you see, Mr. Bates? Well, here's Zach Craig, the corner. You're going to see right here. He's going to line up inside the receiver. Now, at the last second, he's going outside. Thinking, stop it, guys. Thinking he's got help in here, which he does. We talked about the linebacker, but it's also Daytuan Lowe who is frozen by that play action, and that's a safety that needs to be in the middle of the field to help on that inside pass again. Easiest throw for a quarterback right down the middle of the field. And letting them know it is Sosa and Hubble, that combination, a combination that has been there a few times today. So some, some good things. And look at this, 14 points now against a defense that only let an SEC team, a team that started the season 7-0 last year in Mississippi State, score three. So these little victories are going to add up when the dust settles here in San Antonio today for UTSA. Ayano kicking off. Brandon Shepard in the end zone will take it from two yards deep. And Shepard gets tripped up, falls up to the 15-yard line. Jens Jeter with a special teams tackle. So here comes once again Clint Shelf for Oklahoma State. Looking ahead for Oklahoma State. Next week they've got Lamar. And then conference play begins in the Big 12. That West Virginia home against K-State, home against TCU. Big 12 action starting for West Virginia on Fox Sports today. They'll take on the Sooners. Dana Holders knows a lot about Stillwater over the home. Shell on first down, he will keep it. And Shell crossed the 20 up to the 21 yard line, gets six. Jens Jeter and Cody Rogers combine for the tackle. And there's a player down on the field here for UTSA. It is Cody Rogers. Rogers, a six foot, 250 pound junior from right here in San Antonio. These guys have gone hard in this game. Both teams seen a lot of players down on the field. I will say last week we had Nichols at Oregon. This week we've got UTSA here hosting Oklahoma State and been impressed by both UTSA and Nichols how hard they have played throughout the entire game. Start to finish absolutely even even watching after that touchdown, watching this UTSA team go down and cover. You know, I guess we shouldn't be surprised when you've got that gentleman right there, Larry Coker, as the head man, two-time national coach of the year, national champion. Look, you see that little sticker underneath the, the bill of his hat there? That's from the Miami days. That's what all the cool guys do, right? Leave the tags on the hats. I don't know. I'm not cool. Well, yeah, because you... 
I know, I saw your hat, you didn't have a sticker. <laughs> That's Uncle Luke would be proud. You know, he's taking the bottom with him to San Antonio. Well, good to see Roadrunner hop off the field. Second down and four now for Oklahoma State. And off up the middle, it's Rennie Childs, and Childs will have enough for the first down. Shelf gets rid of it quickly. Completes the pass to Shepard, and Shepard gets three yards. What people, I think, sometimes forget or don't even know is that Coker was the offensive coordinator back in the 80s for Oklahoma State. We talked about how he was Mike Gundy's offensive coordinator. He wasn't putting up these numbers back then, but he also had a running back back then. A couple of them were pretty good. Back when it was running back you, Thurman Thomas, Barry Sanders. Shelf going down the sideline, and that is incomplete. Was looking for Shepard. Andre Brown there on the coverage. So he had Barry Sanders, he had Thurman Thomas. He had so many players over the course of his career. But look at the running backs that he's coached. Wow, and, and, and we don't have room for, I mean, look, look <laughs> when you look at all, all of the greats that have come through there, and Barry Sanders taking the ball from Thurman Thomas. How about that? We don't even see Willis McGahee. Third and seven, Shelf. And that is incomplete, no flag. Andre Brown there again on the coverage. Coker told us, Justin, he said, you know, I went from Thurman Thomas to Barry Sanders and had a couple buddies call me up. Hey, yeah, I hate to lose a guy like Thomas. <laughs> I said, yeah, I have a feeling this uh, Sanders is gonna be all right. First game without Thurman Thomas. Sanders goes 157 yards, two touchdowns, a 61-yard punt return for a touchdown and beat Texas A&M 52-15. And then it's like, who's this guy? Trying to return the kick as Harrison escapes a couple of tackles. Harrison, nice cutback. Harrison now tries to bring it back down the center field. Harrison to the side. What a return by Kenny Harrison. Sixty-three yard return after a fifty-one yard punt. What an effort by Kenny Harrison. We just talked about the coverage unit. Everybody, what a good job they did as a team. A lot of this has to do with number 18. There's three guys. They should have them bottled up right there. Two more, three more misses. Coming back across and now outrunning everybody. Justin, this is what's left. This is what's left when Oklahoma State comes down and takes their pick. And Oklahoma comes and takes their pick in Texas. And Texas Tech, TCU, all these schools. That's the kind of talent that's left around here. So what you're saying is there's a lot of talent in the state of Texas. Yes, indeed, partner. Sosa with time. The most time he's had all day. Throws. Touchdown. Kenny Bias with his second touchdown of the day. First one receiving. 19-yard touchdown pass from Sosa to Bias. Did he hang on? Oh, I think he did. Can't let this hometown crowd down. They're too excited. That's a San Antonio guy. Looks like they get the snap off. We'll yeah. take another look at it. 42-21. The return ignites the crowd. And the touchdown brings him to a frenzy. UTSA taking a page out of OSU's book. Two touchdowns in a minute and 55 seconds. That's right, we thought maybe the UTSA defense a little gassed. Here they're just gonna let Bias, they're gonna pass him off through the zone. And one thing that you're not seeing in that as you watch him lay out and make that beautiful catch after the great throw is the protection. It takes a long time to run 
across the football field all the way to the other corner of the end zone. So they're protecting up front and they're still going strong here with 12-15 left in the fourth quarter. You know, again, you mentioned it earlier, Nichols. These teams that you think, hey, let's fold up the tent, just head on back and, and, and figure out what to do next once we get rid of these top teams in the nation. Much fun to watch. Fun to watch these teams have some success against the top dogs. Sean Ayano. High short kick, Justin Gilbert from the five. Gilbert. Gets across the 25 up the 27 yard line. A 22 yard return. Here comes Clint Shelf back out for Oklahoma State. Brady, you're down there on the sideline. What is it like on that UTSA sideline? They are excited. I'm going to tell you what, guys, there is no quit in the UTSA Roadrunners. But I'll tell you what, guys, being on the field here watching Kenny Harrison return that punt. Reminded me of the days back in Wyoming trying to chase down jackrabbits. He looked exactly like a jackrabbit <laughs> running for the Oklahoma State return team. <laughs> First and ten. Jeremy Smith in the backfield. Handoff is to Smith. Smith then turns it upfield, lowers his shoulder up to the 31, picks up for Brian King with a tackle. Some new faces in there defensively. We've seen quite a bit of new faces here in the second half. Clint Shelf, most notably at quarterback for the offense. But here's back to Smith and leading the way. Jeremy Seaton is starting fullback. Second and six. Shelf trying to escape the pressure. Cannot. Sacked by Cody Brooks. Second sack of the game for Brooks. A loss of nine. Youth on display. Again, the burst setting up Jeremy Seaton inside. Hey, if you don't have to mess with those guys on offense, don't touch them. If you can make a direct route to the quarterback, good burst. A red shirt freshman. Third and 15. Can UTSA get another stop? They've got to find a way. Shell. Steps up, down the field, it is caught! Jawan Seals with two defenders on him. 44-yard completion, what a catch. Brian King and Darian Starling were right there. Now on first down, it's Smith on the carry. Justin Seals, we saw him on the opening drive, first touchdown of his career. See, he's using his body against Sterling, and it's just his strength and want to against King underneath. Good coverage. They had him underneath and on the bottom. You'd like to see King and his timing a little bit better to go up and high point that football, but it's tough to high point it when you've got such a big receiver. Blake Jackson at 6'3", Jawan Seals at 6'2". <laughs> hey, Justin Blackman, there's Brian. I'm telling you, if there's a big dude out there, it's not hard for Mike Gundy and company to go and say, hey, you want to be the next Justin Blackman? You want to be the next Des Bryant? Here's the spot you need to come in. Oh, by the way, uh, we like to run it up and down the field and throw it a lot. That was another big third down conversion. And now Oklahoma State is over 500 yards of offense on the day. Second down and nine, Will Ritter, the player who was injured and walked off the field for UTSA. Jeff, the pump fake. Now the shot open receiver down the sideline. Touchdown, Charlie Moore. 33 yards. A lot of people getting involved. Moore's up top. Little double move, pumps him outside, and then turns it right up. And, wow, how about the work that Clint Shelf is getting here? J.W. Walsh runs the football a lot. You're susceptible to, to some bangs and getting hit a lot at quarterback. It's good to have a backup that's so good throwing it. Brogan converts the extra point, 49 to 21. A 33-yard touchdown pass to Charlie Moore. He had six touchdowns last year, his first this year. 
And Oklahoma State comes right back after the big third down conversion. He won a couple of huge third down conversions in this game. Clint Shelf throwing his touchdown pass to Charlie Moore. Look at this. Seven touchdowns by seven different players. I guess that's called sp spreading the wealth. Well, in, in, in an unselfish, you know, of course, Clint Shelf, Mike Gundy tells us he wants to be the starter, but he's had a great week coming right back in practice knowing that this guy, J.W. Walsh, the sophomore, won the starting job there in game one. Do a lot of things with this offense. Watch out here. Our special teams trying Short to get Short kick, and it's recovered by UTSA. Trying to catch UTSA off guard. And it was Brendan Guerrero who was able to come up and make the play. You, you see Gundy throwing his hands up? I, it, 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 I don't think that they meant to do that, that little sky kick, onside kick. You see, you see them we go and find Kip Smith? coming off that hip injury or the, the quad maybe he had a little tweak there you know it Justin it's funny we, we played a game at Vanderbilt the, the stands at Vanderbilt really close to the sidelines uh, Spurrier put in the backups we were beating them pretty bad late in the game Eric Kresser backup quarterback gets in there checks off to a bomb throws a touchdown bomb they're yelling at him Spurrier turns around and says it wasn't me it was him <laughs> it was him I don't think Gundy do that. One continues as Louisiana takes on K-State. While over on Fox, it's the Big 12 opener for West Virginia and number 16, Oklahoma. And then tonight, it is Washington State against the 25th ranked USC Trojans. And the Pac-12 showdown, our full day of college football, continues later today on Fox and Fox Sports 1. Charles Sims. Trevor Knight, two of the guys highlighted in that game, which comes tonight, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Fox. Charles Sims, the running back for West Virginia. Thinking about some of the guys they have to replace. It's going to be a tall task for West Virginia this year. First and 10, the 36-yard line. And flags come flying. And I guess if you're a football fan in the state of Oklahoma, you got to be a curveball hitter. Number 79. Five-yard penalty, first down. When it comes to those quarterbacks, J.W. Walsh here, the, the youngster taking over for, for Chelf. Lake Bell was going to be the guy. Trevor Knight comes in. By the way, um, after you did your Steve Spurrier impression, <laughs> I think for the final 10-11, we should have some more Steve Spurrier from you. Well, you know, it was Coach Stoops who came in and, and helped take us over the top. Coach Stoops, as a defensive coordinator to win that national championship with Spurrier, and it was Coach... Rob Glass and Jerry Schmidt, the strength coaches. You know, the, those missing pieces. When you talk OU football, Oklahoma State football, those are two names that, that all those fans know. Jerry Schmidt is the head strength coach at Oklahoma. Rob Glass is, is for Oklahoma State, the head man at Oklahoma State, and just, just two of the best. We're lucky to have a lot of great football coaches, but the strength coaches are who you really spend the time with them, too quality guys that, that made some great athletes out of a lot of a lot of raw guys coming through there final timeout taken here by utsa and uh, just updating you james because i know you're you're trying to follow it no that's okay let's, um, let's talk about something else brady i don't know if you heard did you hear about this it's now a 21 16 miami lead over florida so florida has just scored with 208 to go, I know how much you were worried about yeah. that. Joe Wickline, you see him there, the offensive line coach. He was a Gator coach, too. On first down, the handoff to Okacha. And Okacha will get two. Tyler Johnson there with a the tackle. And you talked about curveballs. Tyler Johnson actually played professional baseball six years as an outfielder first baseman in the Angels organization. A walk-on here at the Oklahoma State. He'll be 28 <laughs> on November 2nd. Second down and 13. Go, 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 go. 
Sosa with more time. Down the field, open receiver. Caught. Bias. Push towards the end zone. Touchdown. His third touchdown of the day. This time, 67 yards. You'd think with 9.24 left in the game that the Cowboys on defense would realize there are some playmakers over there wearing the dark blue unis. Bias again with the wheels. Ayano with the extra point. Last year, Kenny Bias had an 82-yard touchdown catch. This one, it's 67 yards. So basically, it's a fitting last name, right? Hey, that 81, he keeps running right by us. <laughs> Just miscommunication and not really sure where Zach Craig, usually a solid defender, senior, is going but 81 with the catch and then it's off to the races trying to get to the corner what a great job of staying in bounds ashton lampkin tried to push him out he could not 49 28 oklahoma state leading over utsa Nine twenty-four to go here in this fourth quarter. Ayano will kick off. Justin Gilbert back deep here for Oklahoma State. The fans who have stuck around here for the second half, they're seeing some highlight type plays from the Roadrunners. Gilbert from the five. Gilbert breaks free of a tackle and then gets forced to the bounds at around the 27 yard line. I'll tell you one thing, guys. I'm, on over, I'm over here on the Oklahoma State sideline. And just before that last touchdown by UTSA, the defensive coordinator of the Oklahoma State Cowboys pulled some of their stud defensive linemen, Jimmy Bean and Calvin Barnett. And I'll tell you what, one thing, those guys are not happy that they're one, pulled out of the game, and two, that their defense just gave up a score. Defensive coordinator is Glenn Spencer, his first year as the defensive coordinator. Back out on the field is Clint Shelf with Jeremy Smith in the backfield with him. On first down, it's a handoff to Smith. Smith cuts it back in, gets down, picks up maybe a yard. Let's check in that Miami-Florida game with Patrick O'Neill. Yeah, I heard you guys talking about it. Mr. Bates may be interested in this onside kick for Florida. Need him on the hands team. Oh, it's a great kick, but recovered by the Hurricanes. Now, there's about a little over a minute left in this game. Fourth down, so Florida should get the ball back, but a lot of field to work with. Justin and James. Thanks for the update, Patrick, here on second down. It's the fullback, Jeremy Seaton who makes the catch, gets tackled by Cody Brooks. Picks up six, so third down coming up. Mentioned that strength staff there at Oklahoma State. Jeremy Seaton, one guy taking advantage of it, came in as a walk on a high school quarterback, now a fullback. Third and three. Smith splits out. Quarterback draw up the middle. Shelf gets the first down, dives up to the 45-yard line. Love that play call there by Oklahoma State and the first-year offensive coordinator, Mike Yersich. On first down, Jeremy Smith. He'll get four. Stephen Kerfus. No rest for the weary. There's a hockey line change for UTSA. They finally get to come up for air, get some fresh bodies out there. 
Yersich, the fifth offensive coordinator under Mike Gundy. Some pretty good company. You look at the list of guys that have come here and coached ball. Oh, Marcel Aitman got hit hard. Decleated by the sideline. Chase Dahlquist. Oh. I think these officials have done a good job of, of keeping the flags in their pockets. That's a, that's a one right there. Could be a 50-50. Some of these crews around the country. That's just a good hard football. They missed the case on that exchange. Kept by Shelf. Let's look at this hit again. Doesn't leave his feet. Doesn't go up too high. Down low in the chest. You know, you could say, oh, he caught a piece of the face mask. He's trying to keep the head out of the way. And that's split second. It's tough when you got a guy running across the middle or down the sidelines. <laughs> got a lot of wows here in the Alamo Dome. Second down and nine, under seven to go. Play action. Shell lost it. Completes it to his big wide receiver, Blake Jackson. And it's Dahlquist again coming up to tackle him, a 20-yard completion. We've got a road runner hurt. We're going to go back and watch this. This this is what scares me, the, the big discussion of targeting. Well, now guys are no longer going to target up high, so they're going to have no choice but to go low. And everybody talks about the knees that are going to be hurt. Yes, that's a concern. But to me, it's it's a now it's a it's a neck. It's a back of the neck that's exposed. It's a you know, it's just you, you really expose a lot of your body as a tackler. And that's, you know, and, and the, that's not what happens here. But if you look at him here, low and exposed, see how everything's exposed as a defender? That's what scares me. We're, we're no longer talking as, as you move forward. We're no longer talking. And that is not, ladies and gentlemen, what happened here, obviously. I'm just proving the point down the road. You know, not just talking a, a little, little fuzziness with the head. We're talking an exposed neck area. It was Darian Starling who was injured on the play, now first and ten. Play action, Shelf towards the end zone. That one is incomplete, was looking for Brandon Shepard. Andre Brown there back on the coverage. One thing, these defensive backs, I've enjoyed watching them play throughout for UTSA. Well coached bunch. Neil Nethery has done a, a great job and they're in great position. I wouldn't want to see him on a baseball diamond. Though. They have swung and missed at a lot of balls here tonight. That's three strikes for sure. <laughs> Second down and ten. Desmond Rowan. Rowan is a very patient runner. He is. That's a good observation. And you know what? He's patient to begin with because Jeremy Smith finally got his start. He waited his turn his first year as a full starter in front of him. The senior back, and now he's a junior. He's got to be patient till, patient till it's his show. But, you know, in this offense, second string, you're going to get a lot of carries. And But he does do a good job with his vision of picking and choosing when he's going to turn it on. Shell setting up the screen. The high pass is completed to Roland, and Roland gets in for the touchdown. Desmond Roland with his first touchdown of the season. Well, patience paying off. The whole defensive line running free. Something's got to be up. Rolling on the screen pass, and he lets his, his big offensive lineman get out there. It's just him and big Travis Cross. He's like, all right, big man, let's do this. You lead the way. Ben Grogan on for another extra point. You ready for this? Eight touchdowns by eight different players for Oklahoma State. Ninth time. In their last 28 games, that the Cowboys have gone over 600 yards of offense. Wow. More where that came from. This is just week two. We talked earlier about how Gundy didn't love the fact that they opened with the Mississippi State Bulldogs 
in Houston. Well, next up is Lamar. Then they've got a weekend off before the real fun begins. You know, really, it, looking back on it, at 1-0 and against an SEC team. Now here moving 2-0 and today. A lot of things to learn, finding out a lot about this football team. Three weeks in the books, you got to think they're going to be 3-0, and and then to go sit and work for an extra week before you hit West Virginia and all those teams. I kind of like that schedule now. Yeah. 56-28, to 28, Oklahoma State leading UTSA. It'll be Kip Smith to kick off. Cam Jones is back deep once again here for the Roadrunners. Jones from the three. Jones trying to hit the hole, and that was closed quickly. Stopped at the 19-yard line. James, we came on the air here today talking about Oklahoma State and the quarterback situation. There was no more controversy. It is J.W. Walsh. We also said UTSA is the best team you've never seen. They have done a lot of good things here today in front of a national audience in just their third year of existence as a football program. Well, and, and that gentleman right there deserves a lot of the credit. What, what a nice demeanor. You know, just what, 73 and 25 it is, is the career as a head coach, a national champion, a lot of credibility. And he understands that people around here love their football. These kids love to play it, know how to play it. Go, go, go. Carter hands off to Ocaccio, who got a nice block, and he's got a first down. You know, I mean, this shows right here. At what point do you just kind of start going through the motions? Ah, it's been a track meet. It's been fun. We're not going to win this one. It's not the case. It wasn't the case. And the comfort behind win last week here, Tucker Carter, getting mentioned earlier, one of three uh, quarterbacks on this team. Fathers as high school football coaches. His dad's an offensive line coach back at Allen, Texas. Sets up the screen for Williams. Jarvion Williams breaks a couple of tackles, and Williams still on his feet as he gets pummeled from behind up to the 46 of Oklahoma State, a 19-yard completion. Trace Clark chasing him down from behind. On first, another local kid right here in San Antonio. You don't have to go very far to find these guys. It, it, the other half of what we mentioned in the pregame, Justin, the quarterback controversy, let him, let him play this play here. We'll talk about those quarterbacks with Cowboys. Carter over the middle, completes the pass for another first down. To the tight end, Cole Hubble. From a quarterback standpoint for Oklahoma State, this game went as good, I think, as it possibly could have. Number one, you, you let you let J.W. Walsh, who you declared your starter, come out and see what, what he can do throwing the football. Now we saw last week against Mississippi State, he can certainly run it, he can throw it, but you also got your senior, Clint Shelf, a leader. Come off the bench, get involved, get lathered up, and feel good about himself, too. They're going to need him this year. A little screen to Okacha, and that was not going anywhere. Ryan Simmons brings him down for a loss of two. Second down and 12 coming up with three and a half to go in this one. I had that FAU ECU game on Thursday night. And FAU, you can see they're a program recruiting in the state of Florida that's going to be a program to watch in Conference USA. That pass behind Cam Jones. Here with UTSA recruiting in the state of Texas under Larry Coker, they're going to be a program to watch in the conference. Well, but one thing you have with this startup program is you have the Alamo Dome already in place. You have a school with 30,000 students. You have a town, what is it, number six, sixth biggest city in the United States, and just hungry and passionate for a football team. These people who came out today, the over 40,000 people, they just want to watch good football being played, and they're supporting. It's tough to do that down at FAU, at FIU. Third and 12. Over the middle, completes a Brandon Armstrong. And Armstrong, able to get it up to the 26-yard line, picked up eight, now makes it a much more manageable fourth and four. 
when we first went in there with Larry Coker. He said, you know, a buddy of mine, Denver Johnson, who, who played for a team called the San Antonio Gunslingers. I said, what? My dad used to coach for the Gunslingers in the USFL. Talk about that bounty hunter defense. Jim Bob Morris, a Kansas State guy. Fourth and four here for the Roadrunners. Tucker Carter quickly gets rid of it to his favorite target, Cam Jones. Cam Jones, a favorite target of both quarterbacks, and he gets the first down. Again, it's the second effort. This deep into the game, it's the 14th, 15th. I mean, how many second efforts have we gotten? And how many playmakers? We've seen toughness. We've seen good football being played. But that's the thing that's impressed me the most is the athleticism and the speed of these guys that, let's face it, they're trying to build a team from scratch. They're not going to get the studs in the Lone Star State. But they've, they've found some diamonds in the rough, that's for sure. Empty backfield here on first and 10. Carter scrambling to his left. Carter will now tuck it, try to pick up a few more extra yards, gets chased out at the 15-yard line. Stops the clock with 1.36 to go. There have been, Justin, I feel so many positives for this UTSA program today here hosting a, a, a top-ranked team in the nation. First BCS team to come visit the Alamo Dome. Even though it's 56-28, man, a little, a few more points, they need to go float down the river walk and celebrate Fiesta time. UTSA fans, because a lot of pluses to come out of this football game for Coker Squad. Second and six. Carter. That ball is nearly picked off by Ryan Simmons. He already has one interception. Almost picked one off in the end zone. You mentioned he got one pick earlier, and it was a big one. Look at him. Just a sophomore in his first start last week. He good drop. Settles those feet, watching the quarterback's eyes, and just go, make it, big guy. Come on. It was Levy got player of the week in the Big 12 defensively last week. Shoot, you could get it this week with another pick. Now third and six. Carter rolling out to his right, throws low, incomplete. Fourth and six coming up. Down 56-28. They're going for it. No timeouts remaining here for UTSA. David Glasgow in the backfield for the Roadrunners. Carter trying to buy some time, steps up. As the block throws the end zone, touchdown! Aaron Grubb! <laughs> I mean, they're loud in here. They're celebrating like they just scored the go ahead touchdown. I love it. It's, I mean, it's great. Oh, look at him over there. That's exciting. Nice job by Carter as well, buying himself some time. And now it's Sayano on for the extra point. We said Oklahoma State had over 600 yards. There's a flag here on the extra point. Well, UTSA has over 500 Defense yards. Defense number 32, penalties declined. how good you are covering you can't be asked to cover somebody for 15 seconds it seems like an eternity for this secondary of Oklahoma State eventually they're gonna find a soft spot especially when you got a guy in Tucker Carter that extends the play like that great job too to get those feet down and make extra sure by Aaron Grubb we talk so much about UTSA and what they have done, and the positives to take out of it. If you're Oklahoma State, 
you're very happy about your offensive production over 600 yards your starting quarterback J.W. Walsh was nearly perfect three incomplete passes he threw four touchdowns and then your backup quarterback Clint Shelf comes in he's effective he's efficient but the defense right now that's something that they have to get straightened out as they go forward absolutely and it, and it was one thing that was really exciting for the defensive side of the ball for Oklahoma State coming out of last week's win over Mississippi State was, hey, everybody's talking about the defense finally. You know, they feel like they've got some depth along the defensive line, didn't always show today. And, and some of these costly, costly penalties are, are about to need to be corrected. Our right stuff, player of the game, presented by Academy Sports Outdoors. That is J.W. Walsh, the starting quarterback. 24 of 27 for 326 yards again more touchdown passes than in incompletions he also by the way ran for a touchdown and he is now going to be three and one in his career as a starter he said that baseball hat on for most of the second half and of course here with utsa down 56 35 you're looking for an onside kick but UTSA with four straight touchdown drops. Yeah, I had almost forgotten about J.W. Walsh. <laughs> it's been a while <laughs> since we had seen him. I'm glad we made him player in the game. Great start. And offensively, great finish. So here's an onside kick coming, trying to keep the excitement going. Has to go 10 yards. It does. And it's recovered by Oklahoma State. Charlie Moore on the hands team was there to dive on it. There was a flag thrown on the far side of the field. Illegal block, kicking team, blocking before they're legally able to touch the ball. Five yard penalty added at the end of the kick. All of these opportunities, an onside kick. Make sure your hands team is all on the same page. You can you can walk through it all in practice, but you get out there in, in a live game situation. These are all great experiences in these first couple games. I would have liked to have seen Ben Grogan, the freshman kicker from Arlington, a couple chances to hit a field goal. Had one try last week, kicked it a little bit low and it was blocked. So obviously something they're gonna need to lean on as the season goes on but all in all that 56 points and all that offense they, they're not forgetting about the offensive side of the ball there's there's my guy rob glass talking to jw walsh there i was, I was talking about him earlier right there that's my man glass i'm glad we got a shot of him he's a great guy we'll be glad to see him back in stillwater they will take a knee and run out the clock and oklahoma state will have a 56 to 35 victory but I'm pretty confident that Oklahoma State will have some newfound respect for the Roadrunners of UTSA. We all should. We all should. You know, eight FCS teams chopping down the FBS teams last week. UTSA, a brand new kid on the block, and showing you that they, they're not too far from hanging around with some of these big boys. This was a, it was a fun broadcast and two fun teams to cover here today. The coach and his mentor, a nice embrace to close this one out. Oklahoma State, 56-35. They move to 2-0, while UTSA falls to 1-1. One one. This is a fun one. Oklahoma State over 600 yards of offense, UTSA over 500 yards of offense, and J.W. Walsh, after being named starter after last week's game, he proved why he is the starter. Four touchdowns and incompletions for Brady Papenga, James Bates, and our entire Fox Sports crew. I am Justin Kutcher, the final score from San Antonio and the Alamo Dome. Oklahoma State 56, UTSA 35. Stay tuned, coming up. We'll take you back to the Fox College Saturday Studios. Rob's